Hi, I'm Cindy from the blog reinventeddelaware.com and we love to reinvent and repurpose all sorts of home decor and furniture and today I'm going to show you how to transform an antique shutter into a beautiful vintage style hanging light. I cannot wait to show you. Let's get started. Here is my shutter. It's an old antique shutter that we got at an auction for just a couple of bucks. The paint is very chipped off. You can see that here. We're going to take care of that and give it a fresh look. My shutter is about 60 inches tall. That's a pretty big shutter. This is going to make a beautiful light. I applied two coats of Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint in the color Grain Sack. It's a lovely soft gray. It's not quite white. Really a beautiful color. And then I've also started to chip the paint off. Let me show you how I do that. So the paint has completely dried, of course, and I'm going to take this flat edge knife. This has a nice flat edge, it's dull. I've used this method of distressing quite a bit. I really do like the effect of it because it makes it look like it's chipped off. So all I do is I take the blade of the knife and I just run it right over top of the surface. And all of the places that are kind of what I call the high places because there's different layers of paint, that's the place where it scrapes off and chips away just like that. Let me bring it in a little bit closer. Let's go over the supplies that you'll need. You'll need a wall sconce light kit that has a plug and a switch and it will include all of the hardware that you see here. My kit was a pair and it was under $40. You'll need a tape measure, a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, and a power drill with a drill bit. One of the first steps that we have to do is take the assembly apart. This silver piece is going to attach to the shutter and we need to remove it from this uh, decorative face plate. All, to do, uh, all we have to do to do that is to unscrew these these decorative, um, I don't know what those are called, decorative nuts, decorative bolts, I'm not sure. Take those and we're gonna set them aside, be sure you don't lose all the parts and pieces. And then this just comes right out. Now we're going to mark this, actually I'm gonna tighten these first. This is going to attach to the shutter like this, like if my hand were the shutter, this is going to attach to the front of it so when we put that face cover back on, these screws will go back through the holes that we just took them out of and we'll put that decorative nut back on. For now, I'm going to tighten these up all the way at the ends. You see that it slides. I'm gonna bring it all the way over to the end. So I have both of those fairly tight. Now I'm gonna take this piece over to the shutter and mark where it belongs. You'll need to measure for where the face plate of the light sconce is going to go. Find the center of the shutter and then mark the placement for the holes. You'll see what I mean here. The holes that are going to hold that, fit, that bracket on, you'll need to measure where they're going to go. I've matched up the center hole with the center of the bracket and then I attached it. I pre-drilled holes and then I used my screwdriver and one inch screws to attach the bracket to the shutter. So we have to do a little bit of taking apart before we can go any farther. This is the socket section. I'm going to take this ring off. It just unscrews. This is what is going to hold on the cage lampshade that came with this fixture. Take that off, set that aside. The next step is to take off this section here so that we can attach this socket section to the decorative face plate that will attach here. I'm not sure if that's the right name, but that's what I'm calling it. And then these wires have protective ends. I'm just going to pull off the protective ends off of each one. Here is the face plate. This is the front side of the face plate. This is the inside. And it has the same wires and same protective covers. We're going to pull those off as well. The next step is to thread the socket cords through that center hole all the way through and then I'm going to put the washer on here so 
It's easier said than done here. <laughs> okay, put the washer on. Then I'm going to cut, uh, grab the ground wire. That's the copper piece that is inside the kit. It has a ring on one side and it's a loose end on the other. I'm going to thread these two wires right through there. And then I'm going to attach the nut. That'll hold that ground wire on there. This is a safety precaution. The ground wire is a safety feature so that if anything shorted out, it would just blow the circuit breaker rather than spark up on the inside here. Get that nice and snug there. Now, while I'm tightening that, I wanna make sure that the socket part of it is in the direction that I want it to be, and I want it to be going downward. It has a, a wing nut here that makes this part adjustable. For, for my purposes, it's fine where it is. I'm gonna hold it at the stem, and back here where that nut is, it's gonna give it a nice, nice tight turn. There we go. I think we've got that on there. Now this end of the ground wire, this copper wire, is going to wrap around this screw, the green screw, it's labeled ground, and then I'll tighten that screw down. That's Before the, we do that, I think we can attach these wires. All right, so for this wall sconce, all you have to do is match up colors. It makes it very easy. I'm gonna take the white to the white and hold them, get one of these, um, what are these called? Wire something or other, I forget what they're called. But basically, you put the wires in there and then you twist and it seals them together and gives it a nice bit of safety so that the wires are not exposed. Uh, is that a wire nut? I think that's what that's called. I, I don't know all the names for this stuff. Okay, the tricky part is holding the pieces up in the air while I'm showing you on camera. That's right, that we're gonna get it done. Okay, so we're gonna put those in there and we're going to turn this and turn it and turn it and turn it until it won't turn anymore. And I'm gonna to try to keep the wires from twisting. So turning and turning and turning. And inside, it's twisting those wires all up together, nice and snug. Okay. I think that's about as far as I can go without twisting the two wires. I don't wanna twist the wires, I just wanna twist what's going on inside. Oh, let's do the other two. Grab the two, put them together, line them up. This kit also came with a sleeve that you put over top of the wing nut like I'm doing here. And then with heat, it will shrink up around that wing nut. Done. The next step is to attach this copper ground wire, wrap it around that green screw, and then tighten the screw down. This is where it could get tricky because I'm trying to hold this at the same time. We're just gonna give that a try. Okay. The screws did not exactly line up with the faceplate, so I had to loosen everything up and move the screws along that slider so that they would fit into the faceplate. All right, I got it all to line up. I've got these screws coming through those holes. That took a little finagling, but we got it done. Now I'm going to attach these decorative nuts back on top of those screws. This sconce has a nice plug on it, so that's, that's very nice. And the nice thing about hanging it on a shutter is that this cord will be hidden behind the shutter. You can plug it into a wall and you can barely even see that cord. I might even take that cord on the back side behind this section right here and attach it so that you won't see it. I might do that from behind, I'm not sure. And I can reach the cord very easily on the side. So I'm going to take the plate, and the plate is going to go right up here, and then this ring that's screwed off screws back on, and that's what holds the plate. 
I'm going to use these Edison bulbs. I got these online. They're a standard base and they fit this light very nicely. Now it's time to attach the shade. I attached the back post into the hole first and I tightened it around. I didn't try to fit each one into all the holes. It's too hard to do that. And I did just about two at a time and I didn't tighten them until I was completely finished. You can see here I'm kind of fiddling to make sure that they're lining up correctly. This part does take a little bit of patience, but just work one space at a time and you'll work your way around it. And before you know it, they'll all be lined up and the bolts will be attached. You can do it. The last step is to add a hanger for this shutter light. I cut a piece of wire the length that I need and then I get two one inch screws and they have a head on them just like a washer. I screw them into the top of the shutter but I don't screw them in all the way. I leave a gap and then I take that wire and I wrap it around the head of that screw once or twice. Then I finish off with a screwdriver and I completely screw it in. I like to add one other little touch to this end of the wire. I like that wire to show. So I use my pliers and I kind of give it a little curly cue and I make sure that the pointy end is turning towards the shutter so there are no sharp edges sticking outward. When you go to hang this on the wall, be sure that the hook that you hang it on is secured in the wall and even use find a stud or use molly bolts to hang this. This shutter has some weight to it so you want to be careful with that. Isn't it so pretty? I love it in this little setting. It, it acts as a light. You could have this shutter on either side of a bed and use it as a night light in the living room to add more lighting or near a doorway. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this project. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We share lots of fun tutorials like this shutter light and over on our blog at reinventeddelaware.com. We'll see you next time.